You gave a very lengthy press conference this afternoon, um, gave a very lengthy statement about your position. Why did you call that press conference? Because it was an unprecedented thing for someone in your position to do. I thought hard and long about what to do um, in the predicament in which I find myself. And I decided the time had come to put everything out into the open so people can form a judgment. I got fed up of little bits of information drip, drip, dripping into the media for me constantly be asked to comment upon. I thought it best to be open, true and frank, which I hoped I was today at the press conference. And you say there's a drip, drip, drip into the media. Where's that coming from? I think essentially it is coming from the police who drip feed information to the alleged victim, Nick, who then feeds it to his press friends. And why would he do that? You would have to ask him that. But that is the effect of what has been happening. Listening to you speaking this afternoon, clearly you believe that there's been a lot of uh, wrong misconduct by the police in their investigation, into your case in particular. And you certainly give the impression that you think Nick is a fantasist. Is that an accurate summary of your position? I don't know what he is because I don't know his name. Uh, he appears on television with a blacked out face and an actor's voice concealing his um, voice. Um, so I don't know what his motives are. But the police, the police must believe that he's credible, otherwise they wouldn't be conducting this investigation. The superintendent in charge of Operation Midland went on television some months ago and said that Nick's evidence was credible and true quite unheard of for a senior officer of that rank to go on television during the course of an investigation to say that a witness was credible and true, particularly with regard to the extraordinary allegations that Nick has made and which I revealed uh, this afternoon. Well, let's just go through a few of those allegations, and we should warn anyone who's listening that, I mean, they're, they're pretty lurid allegations. So if we can just sort of steer ourselves through one or two of those so people can understand exactly why you've said what you've said today. Uh, I have been accused of three murders, two committed by my own hand. I am not a murderer. A large number of allegations have been made by Nick against me and others of sexual abuse, torture, grievous bodily harm, rape, etc. Uh, they are all false. I know they are false with regard to me. I can't imagine that the other people he has alleged have been involved in these matters could possibly conceivably have done what he has said they have done in the circumstances of the detail of his allegations. And you name the other people that he is alleging were complicit in what you are alleged to have done uh, as well. You, you I have quoted the disclosure document that the police gave me and I revealed because the disclosure document did not name the individuals other than me um, but the police told me and asked me whether I'd known these people, whether I'd been to their homes and whether I knew them socially. Um, I knew some. I knew of but did not uh, socialise with others and others I did not know. And there was one particular incident with regard to Edward Heath that, that you highlighted. Would you just explain the circumstances of that? One of the allegations is that I am supposed to have threatened Nick with a penknife to cut his genitals. Edward Heath is supposed to have restrained me. It is absolute bunkum. The idea that Edward Heath and I will be in the same room doing anything, having a cup of tea, is extraordinary. Ted Heath and I fell out many years ago 
when I was a member of Parliament he, and he was a member of Parliament, he would not speak to me in the House of Commons. He snorted at me every time I passed him by. He despised me. The feeling was entirely mutual. This idea that I could possibly be in the same room socially with him, um, having a cup of tea, let alone doing these horrendous things, is a nonsense. And th these other people that I just mentioned, did you ever meet any of them socially? Uh, Leon Britton I met in the House of Commons and may have been to a cocktail party with him. Uh, I certainly would not socialise with any th of the other people on the list. Uh, at the time... Um, I may have known them, but would not have been socially, socially friendly with them in any way. That's not to say that I haven't met them at a cocktail party. Um, as a member of Parliament, you meet tens, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people in, in the work as a member of Parliament. But uh, I can't consciously think that I was uh, friendly with any of them. You, you described, I think, during the press conference, all of this as, uh, as a homosexual witch hunt. Um, who's leading this witch hunt? I'm not sure. Uh, I think there is uh, allegations have been made for whatever reason, and no doubt the reasons will come out in due course. Uh, the police have been gullible enough to swallow them hook, line and sinker. It's time they had a bit of sense. So what, what's the agenda of those making the, all these allegations and, and leading this witch hunt? Why are they, why are they doing this, in your I opinion? I have no idea. It's, you might, you it, must have an opinion, otherwise you wouldn't have held the press conference. I do not know. I may have opinions, whether it's because the person is mad or a fantasist or he seeks a reputation. You're talking about or, Nick? Yes. Or he um, is looking at the money side of things. It wasn't mentioned at the press conference today, but that obviously must be a factor. I do not know, but is it, it is a question that you should put to Nick. Well, uh, but of course, Nick is uh, not likely to come uh, and face you. If you w put yourself in the position of the investigating officer at Operation Midland, someone um, who calls himself Nick comes to him and makes all these allegations. Would you not expect them to be investigated? Of course, and they should be investigating a lot more efficiently and quicker than they have been. If I'm supposed to have murdered three people, why have I been walking the streets for several months? Uh, what the superintendent should not have done is to go on television and say that just because Sunday has come towards him to give allegations means that he believes the allegations to be credible and true. No other police officer in any other inquiry would do that. But you would agree that the police should follow the evidence to see where it leads or wherever it might lead? Of course, I said that in my statement. But the police also have a duty to act expeditiously. I don't think they've been doing that. Have the police threatened you with arrest? No, they've gone out of their way to say, uh, I'm not uh, under arrest, I'm not on police bail. The interviews I've given have been voluntary, some at my own uh, request. Um, so, no, I haven't been threatened by, uh, by, by arrest. They, they have told my solicitors, but not the media or the public, uh, that I'm not a suspect. Why, why do you think then that they are if, if you're being questioned the, on three possibly four murders i mean clearly from the evidence that nick has given them you are a suspect otherwise they wouldn't be interviewing you would they uh, that is my opinion too the police have better conduct their inquiries more expeditiously than they have been doing in view of the seriousness of the uh, alleged offenses have you thought about um, complaining to the ipcc about the conduct of operation midland so far I'm keeping all my options open. And why, why, why haven't you already taken legal action against um, people who might be making these allegations? My parliamentary career was littered with uh, libel actions. Uh, they usually don't get a good result and are in incredibly ruinously expensive for the person taking the action. I'm not a rich man. Uh, I don't have the wherewithal to launch uh, libel actions in all directions as uh, footballers do and uh, perhaps uh, wealthy millionaires. I'm, I'm not of that status. 
Um, of, at the press conference, the, the subject of your pleading guilty in 1987 to four acts of gross indecency came up, and that that was um, against somebody who was under the age of 21, and that was the legal limit um, at that point. Now, a lot of people listening to that press conference, maybe listening to this, will think, oh, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. And that, that's why you will be under suspicion for this. Do, do, you, do you see the link there? I see the link, but I pleaded guilty to those four charges. Immediately, I knew that I had no defence to them. My defence to these charges, to these allegations, is that I didn't do them. I'm innocent of these allegations. What happened in 1987, as you rightly say, was about the age of consent. I didn't meaningfully and knowingly break the law at that time. There was a lacuna in the law making it different in the homosexual to the heterosexual case. That was all consensual. That is a million miles away from what is being alleged against me and other senior figures many of whom are dead. Uh, have you ever had sex with someone you now think may well have been a lot younger than you thought at the time? Not to my knowledge. The person in 1987 who uh, was wired for sound by a newspaper and uh, made allegations to a newspaper in return for money was wired and sent into my flat for sound on his own tape, on the press's own tape, claimed that he was over 21. He turned out to be 19. Have you, um, or had you, or have you spoken with any of the other people accused in about these allegations? No. Quite a number, as you know, are mm. dead. Quite a number are elderly. What, what do you think? I've, I'm speaking for myself, but I may be speaking. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I may be speaking for some people who cannot answer back. How willing are you to continue to cooperate with the police? Because you said some very strong things about the way the police have conducted this investigation today. You, you must be reluctant to sort of go ahead with any further interviews. I will try to help the police with their inquiries as best I can. My help has not been much use to them so far. Uh, and the manner in which they have treated me during the course of the interviews has been appalling. And have they suggested that they will want to interview you again? No. So this could be the end of the matter? It could be. But I stick to the old adage that there's light at the end of the tunnel. In my case, in my life, it's always been an express train coming towards me. How has this affected you personally? It has lost me my job. It has wrecked 28 years of rehabilitation since 1987. It has forced me out of my private life in which I was perfectly happy and content. It's not an easy thing to do what I did today. Um, it has been a very difficult time in my life, and I've had some difficult times. And what do you think the journalists attending that press conference today came out thinking? I hope they think that they saw an innocent and wronged man. What one of them said to me afterwards, that they thought it was a little bit like Jonathan Aitken's simple sword of truth. Now, that may be an unkind interpretation, but you realise that there will be people who think that. There will. History will decide. Do you think any young people were abused by politicians at Dolphin Square? Do you think there was a Westminster Peter Fathering? I am sure that there has been historic child sexual abuse and I made it clear in my statement that I have the utmost sympathy and support for genuine victims. I think the word isn't right, I think it should be complainants. I, I think that that's certainly true. Uh, it may well be that the odd MP here and there 
may well have done something, but not in concert in a gang in so, parties, so, so the, as has been alleged by the police, because members of Parliament at the time, remember hom- the climate was completely different. Uh, you could hardly be a homosexual and a member of Parliament at that time for any party. I think there may have been one Labour member of Parliament who was out at the time. So people, members of Parliament, kept to themselves. They didn't but, but, discuss. But this they didn't discuss. This isn't about gay members of Parliament, they is it? This is about paedophiles. And, and they, ju- but they, you will agree with me that just because you're gay, that doesn't mean to say you're a paedophile. No, absolutely not. But the allegations have been of a homosexual nature, not a heterosexual paedophile nature. What I'm saying is at the time, members of Parliament did not routinely comment one to the other about their sex life or what they were or were so not doing in their So you don't believe that there was a sort of organised paedophile ring? You think there may have been the odd incident, but, but not an organised paedophile ring? Because if that's the allegation here. If there was, I did not know about it at the time, and I certainly was not involved in any of it. Harvey Proctor, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I think suppressing is probably overdoing it, but not acting on allegations of sexual abuse that went on within Kids Company. First of all, I need to really correct this. Uh, The challenge that has been brought to us is not...